La Priado. I was one of the original members of Machete. I play congas and percussion. <laughs> Tarde aquella nunca la podré olvidar. I'm Greg, Greg Sin and I play trombone and I play percussion and sing. Dance music I think is really great because trombone is very, is a melodic instrument. It is a very, it, um, you know, it has a really nice timbre, sounds like the human voice. Um, it can be very percussive, but I think it, it's nice with dance music because it's smooth and like, it's very rich. My name is Gloria Rodriguez Ransom. I'm originally from Puerto Rico, um, from the San Juan area in Atorrey. Um, they call it the gold mine where all the banks and metropolitan like business um, end of, of things are. Um, and I, I grew up there. My, my mom and dad were both from Puerto Rico. Um, and I came to the United States. I came to Pittsburgh to go to school when I was 18. Um, and kind of have made a home up here. My name is BJ Bacrania. I am the guitarist from Machete. Ketan Bakrania. I play bass and cowbell sometimes at the same time. Actually, about half the songs I probably play them simultaneously. Drumming skill, a little bit of piano. Uh, it probably helps in machete. It, it's, the it's probably the biggest reason why I'm able to play cowbell and bass at the same time. <laughs> My 
My name is uh, Mari Maria Eugenia Nieves Escoriaza. My nickname is Senya, and I am the lead of Machete Kisu Montao. <laughs> Before it was called Machete, um, it was Henya asking the three of us from Chai Baba to do her a favor and learn a couple songs for a Latin American Cultural Union 20th year anniversary, basically like kind of an open mic kind of thing. It was at the Shadow Lounge and it was only a half hour show and none of that it was actually salsa music. It was like the more mellow world boleros and then three uh, the bomba drumming songs but for some reason it got a lot of attention it's like we sort of just all formed a, a, a band among friends and we already had a lot of friends in Pittsburgh and they were like our fans the first show that, that Henya asked us to do that we worked we worked real hard for for like 10 days we learned like I can't remember exactly but I think it was like 10 to 10 to 15 songs well you know when playing Latin music what helped out a little with me is that I speak Italian and my family comes from Italy and a lot of those words a lot of the the way that Henya speaks a lot of that sounds like the dialect of Italy where we're from I was trying to listen to the recordings that Henya presented to me and I was trying to to mock the music as closely as I could although it was slightly tricky because a lot of the a lot of the material there is no guitar there's maybe piano parts. I was the audience at one point and when I found Henya I was like oh my goodness like where does she come from and seriously and she's uh, from Puerto Rico <laughs> the beginning was machete is because it's the revolutionary um, the, the image of the revolution in Puerto Rico, right? Like the machetero. It's the tool of the worker. The workers in Puerto Rico, use the they, they, they worked with the sugar cane. So that was the tool of the, of the workers. So a lot of the songs of Machete Quiso Montao speak about the struggle of the people. So it felt like that was the perfect image for the message or for the music, you know? So Quiso Montao, Kisu is a word that means knife in Bantu. And Montao is mounted. That's a, it's a Spanish word. So then I decided to Kisu Montao, which in my mind it means it's like a mounted knife, like a, uh, like a knife ready to strike. You know? Like, it's, it's the message. So the idea is that, yes, when we play music, it's a form of relief and a form of uh, like a joyful celebration but it's all the lyrics and all, 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 all the, um, the themes of the song or most of the song basically you know absolutely all but most of the songs are all about either the struggle of the people or some type of social um, problem like racism or you know poverty or you know, prejudice or classism or all these different uh, problems that affect society. Being able to be part of Machete is a privilege. I, I, I did grow up in Puerto Rico and I grew up dancing salsa and, and listening to the music and um, going to weddings and, and dancing as little kids. But to come to Pittsburgh and be here um, without much of that culture and much of that family environment. It's, it's just a privilege to be able to play um, the music that I grew up with and that I grew up listening. And so I think people do get that nostalgic um, connection with 
Puerto Rico, or even if you're from another country, just the sounds of the rhythms are, are the same or similar. <laughs> started when I was um, when I was 12 you know started in like high school band you know then started my own band in like in uh, 80 in the mid late 80s you know I started my own band which was a metal band and with the big monster drum kit you know double bass kit four floor four um, rack toms two floor toms snare and numerous cymbals you know and it was awesome and it wasn't until like about age of 11 that I actually decided I was going to play some I was like, I was like I've got to do this I got to play drums you know so drums was the first thing like you know marching band drum lessons kind of thing you know then uh playing drum kit also that that was kind of self-taught just cuz uh if you know how a drum kit set up and you know and, and you listen to music like whatever you're listening to you can imitate it kind of learn that way. Um, Dino and Ketan were both in the same ensemble, but 10 years earlier than Henya and I were. So Henya and I were in the ensemble together, learning from uh, a teacher from Congo, and then from Ghana, and then later from Uganda. We all like share that interest in African music that we've learned, and then some of the members also have that background in rock. Um, and I think my biggest influence is jazz. <laughs> guitar since I was nine years old and uh, I grew up listening to a lot of classic rock heavy metal and then when I got into my teens it was more things like Red Hot Chili Peppers, Jane's Addiction, stuff like that uh, and we started listening to more jazz and things like Bela Fleck and the Flecktones. What comes out of my guitar um, especially when it comes to solos and stuff is a, it's a product of everything that I've ever listened to before and so that some of that includes like yes the rock and roll and the western music that we're talking about um, when it comes to, but also there's like, the gypsy stuff. And the gypsies, they like originated, originally originated from India. And I'm lucky in the fact that like you know, every Sunday morning, my dad would crank classical Indian music up. So that stuff has made it into my, made it up here, to, in, in here too. <laughs>
like growing up, I would go to the Bohemian bars with my dad. The town, like the town bars, it's very innocent because you know it's a small town. Everybody knows each other. You know, he'll bring me to the place and there'll be you know the old man playing the cuatro and the other one playing the maracas and the guitar and they would just be jamming and chilling and you know relaxing and and my dad would take me to sing and that's how I learned all these like super old school songs like you know musica de trio they call it cortavenas which is uh re-slashing music which is like the boleros that are really really romantic they're very um heart-wrenching El saber y el conocer la locura del placer y tener que detener esta pasión. And then I went to to college, and that's when I started kind of like going to an extreme <laughs> like difference. And then that's when I was listening like seventy seven punk and um, industrial and alternative and all this other stuff. And all of a sudden, I just pretty much stopped. I was still in Puerto Rico at the time, right? So I was exploring this other music and these other things and it was uh it was a lot of fun i did I, you know to, to explore all this stuff and and then after that i went to new york i started working in theater in the theater for the new city at the time and then uh through that i met joel diamond because he was uh composing the music for these uh um summer oh my god what's the name street theater street theater uh, it, they do it every year for years. Crystal Fields directed. It's, it's pretty. It's a lot of fun. It's a great experience. But when I was in New York, that's when I started kind of like missing Puerto Rican music, you know. And I got a pair of bongos. And then I started hanging out with people, uh, like friends of mine, Veronica, whatever. We would just listen to salsa, to maelo, and stuff like that. And I got it more and more and more. Um, I don't know what it was. It's nostalgic, like hungry or thirsty for that again. Because the more I, w I, w I mean, at this point, it's been five years since I haven't been in Puerto Rico, right? So then I start craving it more and more and more. So then from Puerto R in New York, I lived for seven years. When I moved to, to Pittsburgh, uh, by then I was like really, really um, craving Puerto Rico. And then I had this opportunity with the Latin American Cultural Union to do this thing. And then all of a sudden I'm like, ooh, I can totally make a band that just portrays Puerto Rico. And all, you know, just pretty much look for these super traditional, almost anthem songs of Puerto Rico. And every time we go places, we'll be like, okay, so we'll do it like a Puerto Rican party, you know? And we'll have, you know, salsa bomba y plena, 
and it would be a lot of fun but it also have a message it would also always have a message and it's a deep awesome message but at the same time let's all have a good time i think the distinction between uh, machete and other sort of latin bands in pittsburgh is a uh, uh, the way, way the best way I put it is Machete is more of a it's like street salsa, like you know, like you said, play with rock bands, not not the uh, kind of wearing your high heels, fancy dress kind of salsa. It's uh, it's even more relaxed, uh, I think, welcoming to a, a greater variety of people. <laughs> of Machete, the way, the way it comes out, you know, these songs aren't 100% ours, you know, we, we change them and we morph them into something that is truly from a different band, you know, from, from Machete. We learned a lot of our covers and we've learned more over time and I think that people really responded to that, like these great songs that they love that are still danceable in a different kind of feel, played by musicians with new influences, like they're, they're contemporary versions. And over time, we've really grown into not having to hold on to the original so much anymore. <laughs> Started out trying to be authentic to these recordings we were listening to the Hindi Charles, but then as time has gone, I've taken more liberties. And I think it actually people are enjoying it, at least from the reactions I get from people who come to see our shows, like they're digging it, so it's working. Within the culture of the Latino here in Pittsburgh, um, Machete stands out just by being specifically. Um, a Puerto Rican band that plays salsa and rhythms of Puerto Rico like bomba um, and plena. The bomba stuff is, is like is a Af it's like the African culture of Puerto Rico. That's really uh, it's pretty raw, you know. It's just like drumming, and dancing in the street kind of thing. and our history is, is directly tied to, to Africa and to the Africans that were brought to Puerto Rico and the Taino Indians who were also um, mass murdered and, and, and enslaved and, and ill and, and lost their lives. Um, so I think it's a way of, of people being able to survive. Um, so it brings a lot of joy, but it, it also has an undertone of, of the suffering that people have had to go through.
In the uh, early 1900s, Rafael Hernandez uh, wrote songs like Lamento Borincano. Lamento Borincano is a song about the struggle of the people. You know, a, a hero, that's like a, a countryman, you know, working man that goes and, you know, works the land, tries to sell it in the market, and then he can't sell it because nobody has any money. So he's talking about it a general situation of the island or you know what's going to happen to my poor island and it's I don't think it was ever a thought of as a uh, as a you know revolutionary song more like you know just it had that message and what I love that song is because this was written over a um, hundred years ago and it's still it's still very apropos stuff by my mostly my my little, all the stuff he had has some type of social message but it was these guys because it was so funny it was so the way of him writing it wasn't like we're protesting or we're crying it's almost the opposite we're laughing at the misfortunes where this is where we have we always get by all of machete songs are in spanish um and they all have a social significant um meaning um, for example, El Negro Bembon is, is a, a song about um, a black man being stopped by actually a, a black policeman and being arrested just because of his, the size of his lips. Um, and so the injustice that happens um, in society in regards to the darker you are, the more prone you are in order to be um, uh, mistreated and um, unjustly uh, stopped by the police. Y llegó la policía y arrestaron al matón y uno de los policías que también era vendón So we've kind of uh, 
arrange songs a little differently to add little jam sessions and add uh, things where we can kind of uh, play and then Henya can go into the audience and kind of dance with people and teach them how to dance and stuff. And I, I like that because it gets the audience into it a lot more. But live, oh, having the people up there dance and and you play and you, and you get into a, a great mood and you get into a great mindset where you're just playing and playing playing and at the end when you hear them just roar or just clap and just be happy and smile and, and they you know they're loving it you know when you when you feel that and you see that that makes you you know forget about all the bad times or any kind of bad day you had if my hands never hurt when I'm playing a show. I remember one show that we played for the Penn Hills School District and we played for like from from all the kids from like K to 12. They just brought them in in a big auditorium, you know, and uh, and then they had like, you know, one group and then another group we played like two shows or something, you know, and um, in that one instance of that particular show that I always remember this show, you know, because they said, hey, you know, like somebody came up with a microphone and said, Hey, uh, talk about your instrument a little bit. And Ketan's like, oh, I play the bass. And he went like, doom, 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 doom. You know, he went doom, doom, right? And then they all like started clapping. You know, they were like, hey, you know? And then like, um, they asked somebody else, like a horn player, you know, like, hey, this is, and they go, what is your instrument? This is a trumpet. And he blew the trumpet. He went, doot, 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 you know? And they all went, yay. And then they came up to me and they go, what do you play? I play, I said, I play congas, you know? And then I just went nuts on my conga. I was like, blah, 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 boom, I was wailing on him, right? And there was this pause. And then they all went, ah, they all started screaming. And that was the first time that I ever felt like I, like I understood what the Beatles felt like. <laughs> Like when you go to a venue and you check out like live music, if it's something that moves you, if it's something that, you know, it's a gathering of the masses for you, something very positive, you know, and everybody's just like, yay, you know, this is making me very happy. <laughs> we were kind of afraid of recording for a while because we feel like it's a very, um, it's, a, it's a, like a life experience. Like it need, it's something that needs to happen. To go, you just have to be there, and because it's more of a what happens within that space. Like we all go together, you know what I mean. And I don't know if you can really capture that in in on a city. I think we feed off of each other, and we can just look at each other and just be like, "Yeah, this is really good, and we're doing really well," and um, encourage each other. Um, and I love when the the trumpets and the um, guitars are, are are battling each other. Grueling rehearsals. Like I remember rehearsing like night after night to get ready for a big performance. One of our first performances where we had the whole horns. And I, I remember it was it was it was hard. And I was thinking, oh, as soon as this performance is done, I am done with this band. You know, that was what I was thinking. And then we played the show, and it was so much fun. We looked out in the audience. Everybody's having a great time. And yeah, it was just it was a lot. It was a lot of fun. And then so it just kind of it's just kind of stuck together. <laughs> Okay. What's the tempo? Oh. 
And also, you know, as far as like personally and culturally, you know, I still get goosebumps when I sing some of those songs, you know, or a lot of them, yeah. And I get a lot of it response from the audience a lot. Like if they're Puerto Rican or they like their grandmother was or their mother or their aunt or and they tell me and they're like, oh my god, you made me cry or oh you made me so nostalgic or you know, all these things because because that's what music does to you, right? Like it just awakens certain feelings and certain emotions. <laughs> I think people have had to, over the years, find meaning and find purpose and find the positive side of any situation. And so to put drums and music and livelihood to a situation that may be dire just helps folks be able to endure and, and go past and create conscious and create um, awareness of something. So it doesn't have to be depressing to drive a message and to create consciousness. <laughs> Latinos in Pittsburgh have to hold on to some part of their culture. Um, if not, there is depression and there is isolation and there is, because I think we all have a reason for staying here, whether it's work or whether it's family or whether it's the circumstances in our country are not conducive to us being there. But when you're here and you make Pittsburgh your home, I think we have to be purposeful about getting into the community and getting into um, what Pittsburgh has to offer. And it is people like Henya, who's from Puerto Rico and is willing to share her talent um, and her culture with us that helps us sustain and help us, in a way, even be healthy. It's an excellent way of sharing my culture because that's, the, I mean, that and food 
music and food are like the only ways you can really um really share your culture and that's I feel like I, I'm blessed because I've had that opportunity. it has more of a personal meaning for me because I am going as a as a uh, like once again ambassador of Puerto Rico kind of like ooh let me see where I, where I can take this you know and I love to play for festivals and I love to play for schools and a lot of educational things you know so yeah but in the meantime I have my daughter and she's nine and a half she's just in fourth grade so I'm limited as far as how far I can go within, you know, and that's beautiful because I love it. My feeling is always like the best projects are the one that start somewhere specific and just grow. Like the people who like us, it's not just because we play those songs and we can always play those songs. But yeah, I think we do need to evolve. I feel really, really blessed to, to have this opportunity to, to make music with these people, with Machete, and I hope that we can continue to grow um, and discover new territory. I don't want anybody in Puerto Rico ever thinking that I'm disrespecting the music by not using the traditional instruments, but it's a matter of resources, and and we use what we have. I want to I want to really really just respect what what the, the tradition. Uh, in the meantime, I'm doing what I'm doing, and I will apologize a million times to whoever I need to apologize, but I'm not gonna stop doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> it. <laughs>